Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I'm going to walk you through a quick tip on how to reduce the bloat in imported fact tables. Now, this is a practice that many people have discussed, but it is a great example of understanding business requirements for a report and designing the model accordingly. Now, the end result after I applied this practice was about a 50% reduction in my file size, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So I'm going to start this conversation by showing us the sales data table that we have in front of us here. This is very similar to any other fact table we would have in a Power BI data model, and it has a series of columns over within the table itself that contains different levels of granularity. And by granularity, what I mean is that for any of these columns, if you select it here and you come look at the bottom, you'll notice that there's a number of unique rows in terms of distinct values, and then the total number of rows here. So for this example, date keep has 1,096 distinct values on 859,000 rows. And the conversation that I wanna have with you here is understanding when and where you wanna keep certain columns in your model versus others. And we actually have a couple of columns in here that has a lot of distinct values that we might not actually need based on the business requirements. And that column is actually the sales key column or ID column for this table. And there may be times when you may or may not need this, depending on your business requirements. And the reason we'd want to get rid of this is that there are 859,000 distinct values. So for compression, that is going to be very, very inefficient and take up a lot of room. Now, one thing I want you to consider is I've had scenarios before where I've gone to clients and I've ended up optimizing their model substantially because they don't actually need the unique IDs from this column. What they instead might need is order count or something else. And if they don't need to display anywhere on these report pages the unique IDs or have them as part of any relationship in the model, then instead what you can do is a row count or other methods to calculate this rather than having to actually save this column in the model, which again, for compression purposes, will eat up a lot of space because it has to remember all 895,000 of those unique values and it's not gonna have a very easy time compressing that versus a column with substantially less unique values in there. So in this case, considering we do not need this, I can go ahead and just delete it from the model itself and then I wanna show you the end results of having this in here versus not. Select delete. And as you can see, I have both versions of the file saved in front of us here. Here's the non-optimized one before the column deletion, 25 megabytes, has dropped all the way down to 13, so a substantial decrease in this. And there could be many different scenarios where this comes into play, but the end result of this quick tip is that you want to avoid high cardinality columns in your model unless you have to have them. And truly, the key takeaway for this is that there are a lot of different scenarios where you may or may not have high cardinality or columns with a lot of unique values, but you want to make sure you only have them in your model when you absolutely need to. Otherwise, you end up with scenarios like this where you have a lot of extra bloat. So really good way just to go ahead and get rid of them. And again, check to make sure that the amount of detail in your model matches your business requirements, and you should only supply exactly enough to meet those business requirements. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Plus, if this is your first time to my channel, or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. So until next time.